So today we're chatting to Sarah Pierce from Travel Shoot. Thank you for coming and sitting down with us. We're very excited to have you mm -hmm. here. Um, and part of our creative, as part of our creative cookies series, where we interview amazing women who inspire us. Mm. So welcome. Um, so tell us, start off by sharing what it is you do and, and a bit about your business. Yeah. So I am the founder of Travel Shoot. So about two years ago, my husband and I were in New York. And a friend of mine had moved over from Australia and he borrowed us for an hour to take some photos. He was a budding photographer and I felt a little bit arrogant at the time, but it was really casual. And I actually said to him, don't worry about sending me the photos. But when we got the images back, they were kind of unlike any travel memories we'd ever mm -hmm. had. Huge like New York city landscapes and all my friends wanted to be connected with him. So that was the brainchild for the business. So that was about two years ago now. And so the business now is 30 cities and growing. That's we amazing. have local photographers in each location. We've kind of disrupted the industry a little bit and created really affordable and simple packages for, for you to be connected with someone in Paris or Sydney or Bali for an hour or two and, and get some get a really cool travel experience mm. but also get some really cool images awesome and you have disrupted the industry and you've been the recipient of a bunch of um, grants and awards and all of that kind of thing as a result of it which is pretty cool yeah yeah i um i'm a big fan of an entrepreneur called lorraine murphy an australian female entrepreneur and her advice last year at a presentation i was at was just to go for it any mm. competitions or mm. anything that's out there particularly if you're in the startup phase um, you know, if you've got a really good concept, it can help with exposure, and we definitely found that last year. Amazing. It's yeah. a great concept. I know that that's what I would like to have travel shoot follow me around on my vacation. It's very appealing. <laughs> yeah, and I, it's funny the response we get. Like, some people think it's about being a supermodel or being kind of really posy. It's just the anti that kind of our brief to our photographers is, you know, it's not about cheesy tourist snaps. Yeah. It's mm. kind of hanging out with someone for a couple of hours, telling them a little bit about mm. your city and kind of showing them where to go, but in the process getting some really natural, kind of edgy contemporary shots. Mm. And it's kind of the opposite of having everything just on your phone. Every photo I have is basically on my phone, which yes. is, you know, I'd so much rather have some memories that I can actually have of yeah. those trips that aren't just yeah. you know, going to be deleted next time I get a new iPhone. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. With it, and I think that's the difference at the moment. We're finding people are doing a travel shoot because particularly for families, like not everyone mm. has normally been in the frame or for couples. Yeah, yeah. Like mm. if it's the selfie, you know, mm. your, your faces can be in the frame, but, you know, the amazing Parisian background mm. that's in the background as, isn't actually in the shot. So, mm. yeah, there's a multitude of reasons why people are doing it. But, it's mm. yeah, it's going really well. So when it comes to your role as boss of your company, mm. what do you find the best and the worst thing about running your own startup? I think the best thing is just the freedom to take risks. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't say ultimate freedom because that kind of comes with the other side of, you know, if you fail or you make bad decisions, you're accountable for that. But I kind of really like that. I've always been someone that I trust my gut. Um, and I suppose when I've had a corporate job before, you know, sometimes you can't, you don't have the freedom to make your own decisions. Yeah. So I love the freedom of being able to just trust myself and back a decision and, you know, if it works, it works. Mm -hmm. um, I think the worst thing for me at the moment, I'm still in kind of technically year one, year two. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the all consuming, like, life of a founder of a startup there's so no breaks no yeah. breaks no mental rest no <laughs> so i probably look not great right now you know we had a skype it we've been trying to partner with a travel blogger for months mm. and you know we could only skype with her today at 1 a.m new york time <laughs> um we had an investment meeting at 8 a.m so mm. you know you have to be involved in you know if you want success you have to work really hard and unfortunately there's no way of avoiding the hours in the beginning mm -hmm. yeah great so you talk about success, how would you define that for yourself? Uh, the travel shoot, our success this financial year um, is, because this is our first year of kind of operating, mm -hmm. um, it's about validating the concept. So it'll come down to numbers. Are people buying product? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've done all the hard yards and all the fluffy stuff about getting the product ready and the mm -hmm. marketing. So yeah, it's now about, um, will people buy it? Mm -hmm. and, um, I think from that, obviously, we've got other goals in terms of scaling numbers, mm. um, but I think it's really important for, for, for products like ours, where we're brand new to an industry, that you know that it works bef yeah, before you try and start doing lots of other crazy expansion plans. Mm. And what about personally? How, would you, how do you want your life to look? 
Yeah, I, I must admit, at the moment, I've kind of got a bit of a personal goal to try and find a little bit more balance. Yeah. <laughs> I think my husband's a bit <laughs> angry at me, maybe not oh. sleeping or finding me at 2 a.m. on my laptop or... <laughs> they never get it, do they? Answering emails, you know, when I wake up. So probably finding a little bit of personal balance. But mm. look, for me, I, I've probably kicked a lot more goals with this business mm. since mm. launch than, than I could have anticipated. Yeah. So. It's really cool to have that. That's kind of what's motivating me at the moment. Fantastic. Mm. As you navigate the startup landscape, what is something that you wish was discussed more openly amongst your entrepreneurial peers? Yeah. Do you know what the really hard thing about that question is, is that last year, because I was so new to it, I met so many people. I had so many coffees and I went to all these information sessions and, and it almost confused me yeah. because everyone had their opinion and... Right. Because you're so new to it, you, you kind of can't filter out what's good advice mm. and what's not. Mm. So for me, what's kind of giving me stability right now is that I've got a couple of key advisors. I only speak with them. Mm. I've kind of shut out all of the other noise and clutter. Um, and it's just kind of giving me much more focus. So if I had my time again when I started, I would really try to set up that model quicker. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. So what's the best advice out of all of that? Was there any, the best advice that you ever received? Yeah, I got really lucky. So off the back of our Shark Tank win, I had some time with Janine Alice. Mm. So her pinnacle of advice in all the sessions I had with her was, I think it's really important for female entrepreneurs that sometimes, I've done it, I must admit, I've done it with a diet. I'll go, oh, I know in my head what I want to achieve, but I'm not going to tell anyone because then if I don't, lose all that weight everyone's gonna think that I've failed mm -hmm. but and we do it the same in business mm -hmm. and um, I was talking about that kind of concept with her you, you, female entrepreneurs sometimes hold back we don't put it out there about mm. you know we want to go global or we want to get a shitload of investment mm. um, we kind of hold back because if we don't meet those standards then we're seen as fail failing mm. so, so she, interesting. if only to ourselves really. yeah 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 because yeah. we're so worried about what others will think whereas sometimes guys are the complete opposite yeah. so yeah. <laughs> um that advice really kicked my ass into gear mm. um and we've had some really exciting um progress with partnering with major travel players mm. um, since we kind of really thought about the fact that yeah we, we are the only ones playing in the space we've got a really good product we know that we can scale and just kind of not holding back mm. it's really important to be able to articulate a big vision yeah massively if you want to attract people yeah. who are going to get behind you and put their yeah. money behind you yeah. yeah yeah and to also be able to sell yourself too like you know that whole Australian tall poppy syndrome all of that kind of stuff but to actually walk into a meeting and go yeah I'm freaking awesome at this and you should give me money yeah. to do it or whatever you know yeah 100% yeah. yeah yeah if any who is your professional hero is there anyone that you really look up to in the mm. entrepreneurial space? I have heaps I have heaps um, a personal favorite of mine is David Conroy who was kind of the founding member of Young Care, so oh, awesome. kind of close to home. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think you go. I, I think sometimes in life you hear, you, know, you meet people, and you hear things and presentations or events, and just something resonates with you. Mm -hmm. So when I heard his story about how he had kind of created something so spectacular off the back of his own personal experience mm -hmm. that is now helping way more people yeah. um, in ways that people can't imagine um yeah I so that's always stuck with me and I always thought that if we ever start something if there's any way that I can help young care um I will do that so for me his story and his mates and them all just quitting their jobs and getting something off the ground to do something really positive mm -hmm. um yeah he's we'll link that in the description box yeah, yeah. definitely so people can check, check it out. out yeah if they cool. haven't heard of it Fantastic. yeah any others that you want to mention um Look, kind of Australian female icons, um, Janine, mm. Naomi, um, I'm a big fan of Emma Isaacs from Business Chick. She's doing some, mm. kicking some massive goals at the moment. Mm -hmm. Again, Lorraine Murphy from Remarkables. Um, kind of people that I can relate to. They've, mm. you know, done it off their own back. Maybe, um, you know, have started empires from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really a big fan of. And so. really through making connections with people. Yeah. Massively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just, I think I think the really cool thing about the power of female entrepreneurship is that particularly if you're in a marketplace where your customer 
is relatable. So for me with Troubleshoot, my market is me. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. came from my experience. You know, a lot of our customers are women that are doing shoots for their honeymoons or destination weddings mm. or engagements or, you know, family shoots. So, um, yeah, that's me. So I kind of feel really passionate because I understand the customer. So yeah. I think that's where a lot of female business leaders kind of, yeah, can really um, have a lot of success. There's some real advantages. Yeah. I feel that way in my business as well. Yeah. yeah. And the most important question that we ask all of our creative cookies is mm -hmm. what is your favourite cookie flavour? I'm really... I have... I have given Byron Bay cookies so many plugs. <laughs> I really hope if you're watching, can you please sponsor me and just give me so my Free cookie. favorite cookie of all time is the Dotty Cookie Byron Bay. Yeah, that's specific and I like Hands it. Hands down, it was actually my it was actually my wedding present oh, that's awesome. to everyone that came to my wedding because I'm obsessed with them. So yeah, there you go. Hands down. If you haven't had one, go and buy one. I haven't. I'm oh, going. Go and buy one. Well, Best cookie. Go. Yeah. Sarah, thank you so much. That's okay. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks.